Hey, hey, it's Weiwei, and we're going to be checking out a terrible PC build guide video, so uh, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so it's been a week and a half almost, and uh, I apologize, I have been a bit sick, and I have uh, pretty much not released anything until now. So uh, we are having a look at The Verge's $2,000 custom PC game build tutorial. So uh, rumor has it that this is very sketchy, so uh, we're going to have a look at all the little flaws in this video, and we'll, uh, yeah, make some judgments on it. So, uh, let's go. A few years ago, TC, or managing editor, built a gaming desktop, but yep. it's kind of out of date, and it's definitely not going to hold up for Battlefield 5. So, let's Nothing's build a new Nothing's really going to hold up for Battlefield 5. You can build a gaming desktop for around $1,000, but yep. I want to go all out, so I spent around 2000 PC like this is going to be able to play most games at ultra settings, so what do you need to build a desktop? But well, of course, resolution? first you need a table. Preferably oh, not nah, metal. Gonna if it's it going to be metal, have an anti-static working surface layered on top of it, yeah. a thermal paste applicator, Ooh. an Allen wrench. Wait, what? What part on a PC needs a damn Allen key? Oh, man. Some tweezers to tighten up the wires, Those a Swiss Army tires. knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver. A Swiss Army knife? Don't you have tools at the office that you're building this in? Oh, alright. Let's in it. keep going. And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you and the parts. A these are the parts you're going to need. But more wow. importantly, before we get there, we need to understand what these parts are doing and how they interact with one another. To better understand the parts that make up a desktop, let's try to understand them individually. Like the processor the is like the computer's money brain, animation. a base of calculations that control everything the computer does. The motherboard is like the foundation, serving as a main structure for all other parts to be added to. It also allows the other parts to communicate with one another, which yeah. also makes it kind of like a nervous system. Graphics mm, cards are responsible somewhat. for rendering and processing visuals into what you see on mm. screen. Our PC's power supply is of course channeling electricity, in that it adjusts and provides the right amount of energy to keep it running. Last but not least, RAM, or random access memory, and your hard drive are good examples of short-term and long-term memory, respectively. Yep. If you want to better understand what kind of computer to build, memory. then first figure out what you want to use it for. A gamer might care Gaming. more about a graphics card than, say, a video editor who might want extra RAM to assist with editing large mm. files. If Maybe. you're building a budget build for video streaming, say, under $1,000, you want to focus on parts, like a Core i5 or Core i3 processor, that require less energy. They'll be less powerful, but then you'll be able to scale back the cost of several other parts. And Save if you need help choosing the right parts shell. for your build, there are sites like PCPartPicker.com that help this show presets totally for which parts fit video. together, which sort of part conflicts you might have, and where to find deals on new parts. Right. We have a lot of boxes and a lot of PC parts, so it's best you unbox them, yep. isolate the parts that you really need, place items into the case, and make sure that they all fit, and then start working. Yeah, and now we're really going to start building by adding the motherboard in. Some notes about installing motherboards, they're really delicate, you should be really careful with them. And yeah. screw in with confidence, but also don't screw in too hard, otherwise you could crack the board. I don't chose hard, Asus' guys. Z370 motherboard for two confidence. main reasons. One, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and also it has support yeah. for NVMe SSDs, meaning you can get really it's fast really SSDs hurtful. that are really easy to install. Pay close attention to the brace that goes at the... <coughs> Uh, that's an IO shield. Back of the computer? You always have to make sure that you really hammer it in. Oh, alright, so the way he's got the motherboard just lying across all those motherboard standoffs is just terrible. If he brushes his hand against that motherboard and it scrapes against those standoffs, the whole underside of the motherboard's PCB will be scratched up. Let's because there's no screw, it really just has to go outside of the case and clasp onto the frame. Clasp. And this is very important because otherwise you can't align the motherboard correctly with the holes. We're just going to start installing all eight screws. Yep, with a Swiss Army knife. So next we're going to install the RAM on the motherboard. I chose Corsair's 16GB Vengeance LED RAM for two main reasons. One, it has LEDs and we do like lights in our gaming desktops. Secondly, uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So it's pretty fast and this motherboard supports okay. that speed, which is most important. 
uh, open the slots first and just aligning is. the stick with the Jeez. middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid right, clasp so and you don't see the there. gold connectors on the side anymore, that's when you know the RAM and is in. Step three, the we're going to install the so, Okay, so he's put two sticks of RAM side by side. Usually in most motherboard manuals, they will ask you to put them in allocated spaces, which usually if you're using two slots out of the four, they would at least have one slot in between for spacing. Uh, as they are grouped dims. So uh, if you have four sticks of RAM, you would run the full four with no space, obviously. But since you have two, you have to choose uh, the allocated two slots. So usually it's the ones to the left and uh, you would have a space in the middle and on the side. So Ooh. hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into it's the motherboard two. without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. This is from Kingston and it's 480 gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out and it's only held down by one yeah, screw and you know, a latch, so it's really simple on, so and really straightforward. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. You want files to write quickly and you want games to load quickly, so that's why it's best if you use an SSD. Oh boy. Okay, so step four, we're going to install the graphics card. I chose PNY's GTX 1080, which is overclocked, and so it's a pretty easy installation. You're just gonna find the gold connectors. And you're going to line PCI this bracket with the back end bracket or PCI PCI PC bracket. case. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system. I'm just going to pick the top one because oh the SSD is at the bottom and I don't want to cover it. I just think it looks nice. Click okay, it. so because uh, <coughs> he thinks it looks nice, usually with PCI slots on the motherboard, they have allocated speeds. So we've got 16, 8, and 4. And then there's also other ones like one. So uh, pretty much with a graphics card, you would want to place it in the best speed possible. So 16, which is also usually the one at the very top and sometimes in the middle, especially if you're doing an SLI setup, which is two graphics cards or more. Um, yeah, so pretty much, yeah, you're not really stuck for choice. Yeah. Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spots that you haven't used. You shouldn't have taken them out. You don't have to screw these in. They get bolted down by the back end bracket. Well, and your GPU's installed. On your case. Power supply time. I chose Corsair's oh, 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for ray tracing GPUs ray when they come out. And I don't want to have to upgrade it again. So all oh, you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads okay. so that the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the <laughs> All right, so uh, those little insulating pads are pretty much vibration pads. So once the, uh, sorry, once the power supply's fans start kicking over, it won't send vibrations through the case and obviously cause disruption. So uh, yeah, pretty much with the whole short circuiting, um, power supplies are built to withstand that. So they've got onboard on surge protectors and yeah, pretty much they won't short circuit and mess up your entire system. So unless there are exposed cables from the power supply. So yeah. Rest of the system. So just take it in, slide it in nice just and easy until and you have a snug in. fit and then snug. shift it to the back and make sure it's right up fit. against the frame. Now you just take the required screws and you tighten and With screw in. Swiss Army knife. So next step, we're going to install the CPU core. In this oh case, boy. it's going to go on the top end of the case, mm -hmm. and we're just going to have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is going to come a little later. Always be sure to try to Whoa, place. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, well, first of all, the CPU should be installed on the motherboard before you put it into the case. And uh, if you can see here, you can see the table clearly through the radiator. <coughs> so what that means is he has no fans on his radiator. So that means uh, the fluids inside the radiator will be sitting idly as it's being pumped through and there is no fans to remove any of the heat through the fins, which means that the liquids inside will be floating around with the ambient temperature of the case so uh, it's gonna get pretty hot sit in the system first before you install it because you can oh see boy. it takes up a lot of space mm. 
but in this case, no pun intended, it fits in <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> and we're gonna start screwing it in. And there's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. All right, if he's gonna do what I think he's gonna do, he is going to permanently damage his radiator. So with this length of screw, that is made for pretty much installing and fitting the fan to the radiator and uh, the length of it covers the density of the actual or the width of the fan so with that there's only going to be a little bit of screw left which will mount to the radiator and he is punching that length straight through the body of the radiator because they go through the entire frame of the cooler, oh no it doesn't and they take forever mm, that is painful to watch so next up cables Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first, so you always have to find the ones that are gonna fit. In this case, you need to match those cables with the correct descriptions on the power supply. Next step is we're connecting uh, the power the supply the to power the motherboard with the 24 pin cable. Sure. We're just matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. The next few additions will be for the GPU, for any specific ports that the case has, for any lighting that the case has, the CPU cooler, the, anything else really. We're installing the CPU, the heart Ooh. of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. Oh boy. So to do this, we're just gonna remove the plastic covering that they put no. on the motherboard. Don't do that. We're just gonna take this little plastic part out. You do that one. Oh my it. god, he's through the And door. now we have an Keep exposed that. CPU holder, or rather slot, it's a socket. on the motherboard. It's a and socket. And we're going to use the CPU applicator. This is a special little part that not everyone may get, but Why this motherboard that the back we got from of the Asus CPU? definitely does have. It's called a CPU installation tool. It makes it really useful that, if you tool. want to install oh. a Core i7 hexacore CPU. Oh. Yeah, we've got one, we've and it's an eighth one. generation chip, and it's. You can buy it at any computer store. Seriously, guys. Fuck. Ready to go. And it supports overclocking. So what having this little installer does for you is it's basically a brace that you can apply right to the CPU. You don't need And that. light it up with the you triangles that you'll the see CPU on the bottom of the, the socket. And this will make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply thermal paste and then apply a CPU cooler on top. And we're just gonna carefully step. lean it down into the system and make sure that everything lines up. Oh! And we're gonna clasp down on Jeez, it. Jeez, I just saw it bump. Ah, oh, that's not good. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. Every Why? CPU cooler actually yeah, comes yeah, with a bit of thermal paste it. already neatly applied in a circle around it. Yeah. But it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially, what? PC building practice to have a little bit extra and layer it on oh top my of gosh. the CPU. No, the no, 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 with AI oil coolers and any heat sinks for that matter, there will always be, or most of the time, there is always a factory application of thermal paste. That's enough for one time use. You only have to reapply any tubed version of thermal paste if there is no thermal paste at all, or if you've cleaned off the previous application if you're rebuilding a system. He just doubled up on thermal paste, so if that overflows when he's putting pressure on it, it's gonna go into the CPU socket and any other components surrounding the socket itself. Processor. So oh, you're boy. gonna see that there are four oh, brackets, no. or rather like screw screws in here. All right, so he has never heard of the grain of rice application where it's just one tiny grain size piece of thermal paste to spread across the entire CPU heat spreader. Usually the rule of thumb is less is more, and that is overkill. <laughs> Don't follow this guy. With brackets and holders right here, and they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's also gonna be close enough to actually physically come in contact with it, like basically keep it cool. Take basically. thumb screws like this, I can't just see you screw applying them thumb screws. So now that our internals are done, we're going to put all the I'm panels cut. back on, which is the top glass, side glass, front glass, and of course the back panel where oh all this fun stuff is happening.
fun. So we fully built the PC. Oh my gosh. Alright. Things let's, put together. Let's go and we back. got to the post screen. Oh, so what's next? Well, screen. you need a USB flash drive with your Windows installation media on it. And of course... Alright, so before when I paused at the wrong time, pretty much his cable management was horrendous. So actually, let's jump back and have a look. <laughs> Alright, so he's got power cables just everywhere in the front section of his case, and you can see it just littered throughout the case, and that will stop a lot of airflow, and pretty much with it touching certain components, you never know if there's it's going to bridge a gap, and it's just overall messy, and uh, also you can see that this pretty much b-roll shot was shot after the fact of this tutorial because he's got fans now on his radiator which is uh very interesting so the art of post-production built the pc everything's put together and we got to the post screen so what's next well you need a usb flash drive with your mm. windows installation media on it and of course the license key. so i plugged that up Installed Windows in a couple of minutes, oh, installed yeah. a bunch of drivers, and now we have a drivers. fully functioning gaming PC ready to run some games. Right now I've got Armor 3 running, running at maximum settings, native resolution, which is 1080p HD. Wow! And it's running pretty smoothly. Like, um, I'm averaging 70 and 80 FPS, and this is normally like a very intensive okay. game to run. And it's still doing it a pretty good job. So right now I'm playing League of Legends. It's one of my favorite games. I'm actually playing uh, against a bot, and I'm distracted, not so I'm guessed. not actually doing so well. But um, otherwise, Jeez. like this is pretty much what you would see me do on a gaming computer. Test stuff out, and hopefully have really high frame rates like I am right now. I'm averaging 120 FPS, and that's only because I've actually locked the game to that frame rate, because I can get around 300 FPS playing League on maximum settings, Why wouldn't which you play is a little bit absurd, and you don't really need that, so I locked it. Building oh a gaming desktop has been a great experience. I'm able to max out a lot of the, my favorite titles, and I'll be able to play a lot of upcoming titles like Battlefield 5 and Cyberpunk 2077 without worrying too much about the parts I have. When ray tracing GPUs come out, for example, I'll be able to upgrade without having to buy a completely new system. And if I have a problem down the line, I can always just swap out a part and have it serviced rather than losing my whole computer. And of course, now we also have a computer to test and benchmark games here at The Verge. The Verge. All right. So, pretty much, This tutorial is about 40% acceptable in terms of what you should do. Uh, other than that, don't use this tutorial to build your first PC because you will most likely damage a lot of your hardware and it will be a bit of a bummer when that happens. So, pretty much. Check out other YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips, uh, Bitwit, Paul's Hardware, Jay's Two Cents, some of the big names, uh, Gamers Nexus. Pretty much have a look at them first before you build a PC and they will run you through everything perfectly fine. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below and also make sure to hit that bell notification icon to stay notified for any upcoming videos and be sure to check out my previous videos on my channel and uh, without further ado, take care and I hope to see you in the next video.